Okay, so we are talking about linear programming. What is it? Uh, 10, 13, 17. There we go. So we're doing linear programming. What we want to do is this. We're going to have to go back and eventually come up with some constraints. Those are the parameters or the restrictions. We're going to have to shade, 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 so we know we're going to have inequalities, right? And we're going to get some corner points, and we're going to plug it into some <coughs> objective function, right? So if I know that, once again, let's read the problem and see what's going on. Small business produces oak chairs and walnut chairs. The company can produce at most 24 chairs a week. The budget for materials cannot go over $3,200, and the cost to produce oak chairs is 100 and 204 walnut chairs, okay? The income generated for each chair is $300 for oak chairs and 350 for walnut chairs. Okay, so one. First of all, let's figure out what's going on. We've got two things going on. We've got two things. First of all, we're going to make oak chairs and walnut chairs. So right at the bat, let's let X be um, my oak. Let's Y be my walnut, okay? And walnut trees are a little bit more expensive than oak trees, and that's why you get a little bit more cost, and you make a little bit more money because the walnuts is kind of a prettier wood. It's more of a hardwood, but it's more expensive because it's more rare, okay? So I also am looking at a couple of things. I'm talking about um, how many chairs a week I can make. So I've only got so many employees, right? If we work really hard that week, we can get 24 chairs a week, okay? So it's like, you know, a small shop. Small shop, buy the materials, and then the second thing we have is cost, right? We have to buy the oak, and we have to buy the walnuts. So I see two things. One, I've got my number of chairs, number of chairs, and I also see my cost per chair, okay? So I've got two different equations I'm going to take a look at, right? So the number of chairs. I can make up to 24 chairs. But it can make less, right? I mean, it could be a slack week. Maybe we want to go skiing on Wednesday, and so we make less, right? So I'm going to for sure make it x plus y is less than or equal to 24. I can't get any more than 24, hour, 24 chairs just because maybe materials, hours it takes to work, but 24 is it, all right? That's all the, all the chairs I can make in a week. But I could make less, right? You guys agree? That's why it's less than or equal to. We decide to take the whole week off, we make zero, right? So maybe that happens. The cost of the chairs, let's see, it's going to cost um, $100 for oak plus $200 for the walnut. And I've got an, a constraint also. Um, I only can go and spend up to $3,200. That's all I have in my bank account. So those are my first two constraints, right? But it says four constraints. So there's two more, and hopefully they're obvious to you. Um, anybody know what the next two are? What are the next two constraints? Yes. The other two, x has to be greater than or equal to zero, and y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Um, you can't. The whole idea is you can't make negative chairs. I mean, really, theoretically, you cannot make negative chairs. I had one kid say, "Well, you can make them and break them. That's a negative chair." No, no, that's you've made a chair. Okay. Now you just have a broken chair. So it's impossible to have negative chairs, right? Okay, so if we want to graph these inequalities, first thing I'm going to do is solve for y, right? So in the first equation, I'll bring over my x by subtracting it. y is less than or equal to a negative x plus 24, okay? And then the second equation, same thing. I've got to solve for y, so I'll bring over the 100x by subtracting it. So I'll have a 200y less than or equal to 3200 minus 100x, right? Divide by 200. How am I doing? Am I going slowly enough? Pacing's okay? Okay, divide by 200. Megan, how am I doing as far as my pacing? Okay, divide by 200, divide by 200. So I'm going to rewrite this as y is less than or equal to, what's that, 16 minus 1 half x. Okay, so we just got a piece of graph paper, right? Um, okay, I'm going to graph 
y is less than or equal to negative x plus 24. And I'll graph a y is less than or equal to a negative 1 half x plus 16, right? Okay, now, um, you guys, let's see. Can we go by twos? I mean, otherwise, I have to make it a really big graph. It's okay to make it a big graph, but if I go by twos, that'll help. How am I doing? Am I doing okay? Okay. So, and also, I've got a graph x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0, okay? Which just means quadrant 1, okay? Here. Again, I'm just in quadrant one. All right, that's quad one. So I won't even worry about the rest of the graph. So I'm going to put down my x, y axis. I just kind of like, I'm going to ignore quadrant two, I'm going to ignore quadrant three, and I'm more quadrant four because those are negative values. And that's silly, right? That's silly. We're not going to have negative chairs, okay? So x represents oak chairs. And y re represents walnut, right? If I go by twos, I think I can fit everything in there. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. And the same thing down below. Two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24, okay? Alright. Um, colors, how about, we'll go fuchsia and light blue, huh? Because I like colors. I like colors. So let's do the first equation I'll do in light blue. Um, let me sharpen my pencil so that it's sharp. I don't know why I like it, Simon. You're already ahead of me. I love it. It's basically. Well, what I'll have to do is just throw a little information out, and you guys are running with it, huh? Okay, so then. Um, suggestion is this. Try and be as accurate as you can on these graphs because you're looking for corners. That makes sense? So if you go sloppy, sloppy and get the wrong corners, even though you do it totally right, but you're sloppy and you get the wrong corners, you'll get the wrong answer, right? So I'm going to be trying to be a little bit careful. So I'm going to start up at 24. I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over, or down 2 over 2. Same thing, right? Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph that. Let's see, where's my ruler? i got a ruler around here somewhere, don't I? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so. And graph that in like that, right? And it's less than, so I should have below. Okay, how am I doing? Okay. And of course, I'm only graphing in quadrant one because I can't have negative chairs. Alright, how am I doing? Good. And now, let's graph the other one. I'll graph that one in. Fuchsia. Yeah. Oh, they call it magenta. Never mind, magenta. Okay, start at 16. And I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, or down 2 over 4, which is the same thing, All right? Okay. And I'm going to graph that one in. Okay. And shade, 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 shade. And of course, what we're really looking for is the region where they both overlap, which is in, make it darker than the rest, this region here, right? How's that? Maybe I'll make it really good and dark so we can see it, okay? How am I doing? Doing okay? So, here's the deal. This region, this darker region, represents being able to produce no more than 24 chairs, right, within our budget, okay? These are all the possible combinations of making oak and walnut. These are all the possible combinations of making oak and walnut chairs that are going to take less than or equal to 24 hours and still stay within our budget 
of 3200. Okay, does that make sense? Anything outside that area is either going to be too many hours or too much money. Okay, anything way out here doesn't work for either, right? Okay, so this is it. So now let's check out our corner points. Okay, so our corner points are either going to be our maxes or our mins. Okay, so let's see. We've got one corner point at 016. I've got another corner point at, let's see, it looks like 16.8. I've got another corner point at 24.0. And I've got last corner point at 00, zero OK? Those my corner points, OK? So I'm going to ask you the easiest question. Everybody better get this. What value would be our minimum? Everybody agree, 00? Zero, zero. If you don't make any chairs, if you don't make any chairs, you don't make any money. Agree? So zero, zero is definitely our minimum. That's our minimum. Okay. But what about our maximum? Okay, so take a look at it. Which one of these are our maximum? Which one of these are our maximum? Maybe 16, 8. All depends on what we sell our chairs for. Okay, listen carefully. If I sold my oak chairs, just hypothetically, for 500 bucks a piece, and my walnut chairs for $1, I don't want those, right? If the market would, would bear that, right? If I sold my walnut chairs for $500, and my oak chairs for $1, then that would be the one I would make just, right? Free? But most likely, we're going to make both. We're going to sell both competitively. So it probably is this one. But it all depends on what I make for, right? So let's check out. What does it say? Let's keep reading the problem, OK? So then we're looking for our objective function. If I look at our objective function, let's sell some chairs. So my objective function is for income, I'm going to have a 300x plus a 350 why, right? So what I want to do is test each corner and find out how much money I make. I'm pretty sure you're right, Simon. I'm almost sure it's going to be the 16.8. But we're going to test all our corners. So what we're going to do is this. Here's my objective function. Income equals 300x plus 350y. And let's test each corner. OK? Let me test each corner. OK, so um, first. Let's go I of 0, 16, OK? I of 16, 0, 16 says basically plug 0 for the x and plug 16 for the y. See how that works? I of 16 equals then 300 times 0 plus 350 times 16. All right, let me check that out. Use my calculator. Um, let's see, 350 times, all right? That's 0, so what's 350? times 16. So I get an income of $5,600. Okay, not bad. I'm going to make some money, but is it the best? Let's test the other corner, okay? So test the other corner. Let's make test I of 16, 8, okay? I of 16, 8 means plug 16 in for X and plug 8 in for Y, right? So let's do that. Let's shift that up and let's go 300 times 16 plus 350 times 8, and I'm a believer in calculators, aren't I? So I'm going to just use my calculator to do that. Okay, I'll move that out of the way so you can see what we've got. So I'm just going to go 300 times 16 plus 350 times 8. Okay, so just let my calculator do the work. You guys agree? Just plug it in. Make an answer of 7,600. Much better, right? So it's going to make 7,600. And then finally, let's check the 24, 0. So I'm going to do I of 24, comma, 0, which represents all oak chairs. So I'd have a 300 times a 24 plus a 350 times 0. i do that on my calculator real quick. 300 times 24, I get 7,200. OK, so if you look at this, it's pretty obvious what we should do. Simon, you're right, OK? In this case, we definitely want to produce. So my answer, my answer, let's answer. Let's answer for real, OK? So we want to make or produce 
16 oak and 8 walnut chairs. Let's answer the question. Okay, let's answer it. We're going to go to our boss. Okay, we're going to produce. Here's what I want. I want you to produce 16 oak chairs and 8 walnut chairs for an income of $7,600. Okay, how's that? That's called linear programming, okay? Questions? Thumbs up? Okay, let me go ahead and push.